Viewmasters, it's the podcast that we do. Viewmasters, talk about movies that we view. Viewmasters, my friend Eric and me, Joe. Viewmasters, hey, let's start the show. Hello, welcome to the Viewmasters, episode 241. Mank. My name is Eric. My name is Joe. Hello, Joe. Hello, Eric. How goes it? Goes pretty all right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How goes it on your end of Uh, the country? Yeah, uh, about the same. Yeah. All right. I guess. I don't know. (laughs) Code purple. Code. What's code purple? Oh, uh, do, do you guys not have uh, the the color coding system out in your area? I don't think we do. Is that a, is that a COVID thing? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and purple is the worst. Yikes. <laughs> yep. Well, that's uh, that's real bad then. Yeah, uh, we've been there for about a month now, at least. Okay. Yeah. Any noticeable difference in people's behavior? Uh, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> Uh, let's see, I went to two grocery stores today, and uh, about half wearing masks. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we, we did shut down the church, though, so, uh, that's, that's slightly positive, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I assume you're still going into work. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even with it closed. The daycare is still there, but, uh, Gotcha. I, yeah, I still have stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, God's, God's message doesn't, uh, doesn't stop. No, it does not. Uh, and uh, for for the smart followers, uh, it gets recorded and posted on Facebook. Nice. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, the dumb followers all go to actual church and get sick and die. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we're a smart church. Uh, you know, I wonder how God feels about uh, people who continue to go to church during a pandemic. <laughs> Like, do those people, if they get sick and die, do they go to heaven? Uh, I hope not. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's that's a tough one. I'd, I'd like to think that uh, if God exists, uh, which I, I don't believe He does. Yeah, no, I don't either. Uh, which again is weird because I work at a church. <laughs> uh, but but uh, if He exists, I, I hope that He would. You look down at this situation and and just say to himself, you know, chill. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay, guys. You can take a few weeks off. Seriously. Yeah. (laughs) Months even. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm clearly not going to do anything about the pandemic, even though I'm God. (laughs) Right. Well, I mean, he is doing something. He created it. That's true. In a lab in China. That's... (laughs) Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. (laughs) That's right, God is Chinese. <laughs> oh man! And so and if this is if this is your first episode, welcome to the Viewmasters. <laughs> this is just a taste of uh, what you're in store for here on our exclusively movie podcast. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> if you have stumbled upon this somehow, please let us know how, because I'm honestly curious. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Uh, offensive statements or not, I'd love some feedback. Definitely, yeah. Any feedback. Yeah, and you know what? If we got to say offensive stuff uh, in order to get that feedback, um, I'll let you do it, Eric. That's usually <laughs> what I'm good for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, oh boy. Mank. Mank. Uh, I gotta say, you know, uh, you, you picked this movie, I, I thought, okay, you know, I, I'm down for that, and then when I watched it, it was not what I expected. What did you expect? Well, I mean, you know, I thought it would be, you know, a pretty straightforward adaptation of the successful TV show starring Tony Shalhoub, <laughs> and, uh, it is not. You're right, it's not. <laughs> you know. <laughs> there was no OCD, there was no... 
detectiving happening. I mean, I, f- I feel like uh, I feel like Mank and Monk do have some some uh, obsessive behaviors in common, <laughs> or at least you know they they are both obsessive about things. Yeah, I suppose yeah. <laughs> they both they both have a, a dry wit. <laughs> <laughs> Though Manx is rarely dry, if you know what I mean. Uh yeah, he urinates a lot. He does. He he's always always running off to the restroom. <laughs> I mean, this is the raunchiest David Fincher movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> so much toilet humor. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, you think, David Fincher, successful artist of, of various uh, Batman comics, uh, you know, look at his movie career too. It's true; he's he's truly a jack of all trades. Yeah, it's it's crazy. He uh, he went from directing an Alien movie to drawing an Alien variant cover for Marvel. Oh wow! Yeah, did he rip off anybody while he did that? I would assume so. Okay. <laughs> You've heard about the... Uh, I have heard about, at least the Greg Land thing, I've definitely heard about. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That, that is to what I am referring. Gotcha. <laughs> yep. Glad, glad we're on the same page. Yep, yep. Greg Land is a horrible thief. Yeah, he's he's not great. Nope, nope. Still gets work, though. Yeah, well, who knows. Uh, anyway... Okay, all my jokes are done. <laughs> I was enjoying it. I was looking forward to seeing what was next. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, that's it. Uh, I think I referred to the movie uh, as The Mank uh, on Letterboxd <laughs> and uh, Mankey at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Mankey? Uh, ooh, no. Yeah? <laughs> Just more like the monkey. Okay. <laughs> and I th- actually... I. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I once thought I read that Doug Mankey's name was actually pronounced Monkey. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I don't know. I, again, could be wrong. I, I believe you. I have made that up. Who knows? It was again. possibly a wizard, so it was most likely fake. <laughs> it was the April Fool's issue. Ah, uh, damn it, they get me every time. <laughs> it just included a list of incorrect pronunciations for creators' names. <laughs> You know, back pre-internet, uh, you know, when, when creators were, were not so available, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that would have been a real good way to fuck with people. Yeah. Well, I was excited to meet Bill Sinky Wickets when I saw him <laughs> at a convention. Uh, you know, it, it bothers me that... Uh, that even when I thought I was pronouncing his name correctly, I was still not. Right. Just just that, you know, the syllable accent. Yep, yep. <laughs> it gets you. Uh, then I think I heard John Hamm on an interview pronounce it correctly, and I was just pissed. Wait, actor John Hamm? Yes. Wow! Yeah, he was talking about how much he loved uh, his run on uh, uh, New Mutants and his uh, Daredevil graphic novels. That's awesome. Yeah. I like when famous people talk about comics. It is fun. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Oh, uh, the one comic creator name who I'm guessing 99% of everybody has uh, pronounced it incorrectly for his entire career. Uh, is, um, uh, fuck. Now I can't think of his name. (laughs) Oh, no! That is a really wrong way to pronounce somebody's name. (laughs) Oh, uh, Claus Janssen? Oh, wow, okay. Yep. (laughs) I did not know that. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, still gonna be Klaus Janssen to me. Yep. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I mean, it has taken me 20-some years to uh, attempt to try to pronounce Travis Charest's name correctly. Oh, okay. That one is also one I didn't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I found out about the Claus Janssen uh, like a year ago. Okay. It blew my mind. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not because it looks like just a straightforward spelling, so it doesn't yep. seem like the sort of thing that could be could be wrong, and yet here we are. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do you think that uh, Herman Mankiewicz went by Mank because he got sick of people mispronouncing his name? Had to have, right? Yeah. <laughs> Manky Wickets. <laughs> uh, I mean, even in the movie, uh, there's a part where his wife is spelling their own last name and uh, she is, like, frustrated with it. Right. <laughs> it's just I's and E's all over the place. Right. It's too like much. Polish people. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's Whoa. right. God's <laughs> Polish. There's, <Not> there's <laughs> that. <laughs> there's that controversial content <laughs> that we're putting out there. Whoo, <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>, boy. <laughs> uh, I mean, yes. You and I both have uh, last names that I'm sure... I mean, I know mine has for sure, but uh, I'm sure you as well uh, get it fucked up all the time, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine messing up your last name because it seems just really straightforward. You'd think. (laughs) (laughs) It is is, uh, easily spelled. It is uh, pronounced as it's spelled. Yeah. Uh, But, man, yeah, people fuck it up all the time. That's really weird. Like, I, I feel like you have to be trying. Like, because yours, it's, it's just, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and, you know, yours is, um, I mean, I'm staring at it right now, looking on Skype. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, if, uh, if I had just met you and then saw your name, I would probably pronounce it correctly immediately. Yeah. I mean, it's pronounced like it's spelled. Right. <laughs> Uh, but on the other hand, I also know, uh, when I did meet you, I was pronouncing it incorrectly, so. Oh, were you really? I, yeah, I would have sworn for years that it was Gruenwald. Okay, like Mark. Yeah. Uh, that's I fair. Just, I missed that first N. Yeah, no, that's usually what happens is somebody misses an N somewhere in there. <laughs> Grunewald, do you get that a lot, too? I, I get, I mostly get Grunewald. Grunwald, okay. Yeah, yeah, I get I get Grunenwalds as well sometimes. I don't know why. <laughs> like, let's let's make it a <laughs> not a long U for some reason. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. I get a lot of long O's in my my name. So Schoenborn. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh but also I've had people just completely change uh, the last four letters to whatever the fuck they feel like. <laughs> like Schoenberg. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh huh. Sean Turn is another one that I've got. Turn. Wow. Okay. Yep. Not sure where the T or E come from there. <laughs> oh man, Mank. Yeah. Mank. This, this is our movie podcast. Again, welcome new listeners. <laughs> oh, I'm. Uh, you know. It's not going to surprise you what my opinion of this movie was. Uh oh. <laughs> um, so I am just pretty much all over the map trying to avoid talking about it. Gotcha. Well, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. It's all right. <laughs> what ab- what about it? Didn't you care for uh, David Fincher? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I feel like like of the David Fincher movies that I've seen, like of his last few movies, I feel like this is the least. David Finchery of them, like it just it 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 doesn't it doesn't feel like a David Fincher movie to me, which well, maybe is the point. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, let's let's uh, let's get into it. I guess. Okay. So uh, sorry, sorry. I'm no, gonna drag you kicking and screaming into talking about this. No, it's fine. Uh, so I, I will preface, you know, what I've just said by saying that. Uh, I used to really like David Fincher movies. Okay. Uh, you know, I I loved Seven, uh, Fight Club, The Game, I think is amazing. Uh, Panic Room was really good. Uh, and then I saw Benjamin Button, and I think that's one that started going a little south for me. Okay. Uh, and then just, uh, I could not get through Zodiac. 
Uh, I mean, I, I did get through it. I know it's your most favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I don't know why. <laughs> I find it very soothing. Uh, admittedly, I have not seen it since, you know, I watched it whenever I watched it. Yeah. Uh, but I did not care for that, and I just never bothered watching anything else he ever made after that. Gotcha. Uh, but, you know, those first four that he did, first four or five, yeah, I, I really did enjoy. Uh, and, and there's just something now about him and it's that I I can't quite place my finger on why exactly I've I've decided to just dislike him. (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying I'm I'm trying to think of what's different now versus those earlier movies. Like I I I agree that Benjamin Button is not a very good movie. (laughs) Like it is it's probably the least of the David Fincher movies. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of like, if it's, is it something about like the way that it's shot or just like the way that it feels that's I different? Know. I mean, uh, I mean, I haven't seen any of the others, you know, since Zodiac. Yeah. Uh, you know, except this, you know, uh, so while watching this, like a lot of it just felt, and I get he was trying to do a thing, Mm -hmm. but it still just, it felt so tedious and full of itself and empty. Hmm. Uh, it just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, like, I mean, first thing was the fake cigarette burns that I kept seeing throughout. Just yeah, made me want to smash my TV every time they <laughs> happened. <laughs> Aww, I I kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> I like it was it was silly. I it, thought it was kind of clever. <laughs> I I it just it it reminds me of just a really bad affectation. Okay, all right, and, I can see and that. I get you know he is uh, he he is attempting something in this movie, but but to me that was just one step over the line. Gotcha. Uh, where it was just ridiculous and and it didn't feel amusing to me. It just felt like, look how cute I'm being. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I I think I liked it because I used to enjoy seeing those in movies. So like, I did too. But, yeah, you know they were real, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, you know clearly this is you know. It was shot last year, so and, and straight to streaming, pretty much. Yeah, uh, and also, you know, film projectors don't exist anymore, <laughs> so those don't exist anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, and then you know, part of it was like I couldn't tell. Like, everything seems like it's shot on a soundstage. Yeah. Uh, And, and again, it's one of those things where, like, I I, I feel like that's exactly what he was trying to go for. Mm Mm-hmm. But it just didn't work for me. All right. Uh, I don't know. You know, you say some stuff. (laughs) Because I'm just going to try to beat this movie. No, I'm 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 interested to hear why you didn't like it. I I I appreciate you sort of struggling to verbalize it. <laughs> I I uh I enjoyed it, but I don't think like like I I, I think it was fine. Mm-hmm. Um I I think I thought it looked cool. 
I thought that the thing that he was trying to do, which was to make it, you know, look like a film from that period. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and also sort of the way that the structure of the story, um, is somewhat a mirror of the structure of Citizen Kane. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I thought that was cool. I enjoyed that aspect of it, but, but for some reason, like I couldn't. The the only character that I that I really glommed onto at all was um, um, oh god, um, Amanda Seyfried's whose name I don't remember. Um, uh, Marion Davies. Marion Davies. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. She she was she was to me the most interesting person in the movie. Um, like Mank was fine, but also like, I don't know. Yeah. I just couldn't, I couldn't connect to him. I, but, but I feel like whenever Marion Davies was around, like everything just lit up and I got, I got way more interested, um, which is a shame cause she's, you know, she's in a, a decent amount, but still ultimately not a ton of the movie. Right. Uh, it's it's still predominantly a movie about white guys. <laughs> so yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I, I just I, I had trouble I had trouble connecting to it the way that I've connected to some of his other movies. I yeah, uh, d- that I think that speaks to what I was thinking about when when I called it sort of empty. Uh, is that I, I didn't really find any characters compelling, uh, you know, especially, you know, our main one. Yeah. Uh, I do think, I mean, in general, Amanda Seyfried, she may, I don't think she's a great actress, uh, but she definitely has, uh, an appeal, yeah. uh, you know, and, and beyond just me finding her to be very attractive right uh like you know like even like in veronica mars you know she has always just had a a magnetism uh and a charisma that that goes uh beyond just being a pretty actress uh but also she's still not a great actress yeah uh but she's very just can't keep your eyes off her kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I really, I really liked what she was doing as Marion Davies. Yeah. Like, like she feels sort of, um, I mean, you know, she, she's got the accent, which is charming. Right. Um, and just, you know, the, the way that she, she, she's got hugely expressive eyes yeah. and, you yeah. know, she, she does a lot of, with looking at people uh, and not saying a word like, like during the, the sort of climactic dinner yeah, party scene. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I really appreciated what she was doing. I think, uh, you know, just speaking about the character, um, I, I, I do agree with you. I think she is definitely the highlight of the movie. Um, and I think part of that is because even though we only get such minimal information about her, you know, that information that we get is still, it grounds her. Yeah. Uh, it, It makes, it gives her a past that I think makes her relatable to, you know, just anybody who, who is watching. Uh, whereas the rest of the movie is, you know, filled with, you know, artsy, creative types or very rich, powerful men. Yeah. And uh, even, like, the artsy, creative types are, are all very uh, presented, like, to be neurotic and not exactly accessible. Hello? Yes, I'm here. No, Sorry, I okay. thought I thought I thought you were in the middle of a thought. <laughs> no, no. 
um, yeah, no, you're, you're, I think you're absolutely right. And I, I think, I wonder if part of it too is like, I get, I think, I think there is, you know, it's, it's interesting cause there's, there's sort of two Manks in the movie. There's, there's the, the present day Mank who is sort of alone in this house, uh, toiling away at this script. You know, he's got a couple people there who are sort of assisting him, but it's mm-hmm. still sort of, you know, he's sort of this lone, lone writer. I, I feel like that's the, the image that I more have in mind of writers is right. just a person alone with their, you know, keyboard. Um, and then, you know, we also get the, the studio system mank who is in sort of a writer's room, writer's studio type thing with a bunch of other people. Um, and, and it's, you know, clearly a boys club, you right. know, the, the first time we see it, there's like a, is, I don't know if she's a go-go dancer or what she's yeah. doing there. That I was can't real I weird. forgot about that. <laughs> that was real weird. I didn't care for that. Yeah. That, that was distracting. Yeah. And not in a great way. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, sort of, yeah, this, this gentleman's gentlemen's group of of writers uh who are all you know part of this studio system um and yeah i don't i don't know what it was about it that i just you know i just i just like i i find it interesting but i couldn't i couldn't get into it right uh i i think for me anyway it was you know you're seeing writers uh, but they're not really doing any of the work. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like when we watch Trumbo, hell, even the Sunset Boulevard from a couple of weeks ago, uh, which, you know, is almost as fake as Mank. Right. Uh, <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, you know, we're, we're actually seeing writers do the work and, and like, their thought processes, uh, like, you know, as minimal as it might be in any of those movies. Uh, we don't get a lot of that with this. Yeah. Like, like, uh, we just get a lot of flashbacks to him just kind of fucking around in the past. Uh, and then, like, when we come back to, like, the present day, uh, he's already written stuff. (laughs) Yeah. We, we don't see him processing that, I guess. Yeah. And I, I think that part of it, too, is probably, like... So, I know you said you haven't seen Citizen Kane. Uh, uh, did you say that? I did say that, but that is no longer a true statement. Oh, have you watched it already? Okay. I uh, I watched this uh, the day before I watched Mank. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was going to say, like, watching this movie without knowledge of Citizen Kane and what it's about, I feel like would probably have been very confusing. Um, cause I, I think it relies a lot on knowing, on knowing William Randolph Hearst via Citizen Kane, right. if that makes sense. Uh, this, the, the entirety of this movie is predicated on everybody having watched Citizen Kane. Yeah. <laughs> like you cannot watch this movie without having seen Citizen Kane. Which makes me glad that I decided to do so. I am glad you did that. Yeah, <laughs> I was uh, a little worried. Uh, so yeah, it, it did help, but it, that definitely didn't make it better for me. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, you know it's the going back to comics. It's the the thing where I shouldn't have to read three other comics to get this one that I'm trying to read. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, the, there there shouldn't be. I mean, I guess it, the movie leaves enough open that you don't necessarily have to have seen it, but it does really rely on the fact that you have seen it. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 it was frustrating, even though at that point I had seen it. So. Right. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. <laughs> Did you did you uh, enjoy Citizen Kane? Well, let's talk about Citizen Kane for a minute. Sure. Excellent. Uh, yes, I did. Um, there, there's definitely an aspect of 
you know, when, when something is called the greatest thing ever, that uh, it's never going to be able to live up to that. Right. Uh, and it, it definitely did not. Um, I, I definitely don't think it was bad. Uh, I can see where it was very innovative. I can see where it influenced a lot of people. Uh, story-wise, it is, is very good. Uh, I thought it was shot beautifully. It looked gorgeous. It was well-acted. Uh, especially for you know that period of time. Uh, like the acting was very naturalistic, which I don't think you get to see a lot in movies from the 30s and 40s. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it. I thought it was really good. Uh, but not only do I not think it's the best movie of all time, it's not even the best Orson Welles movie I've ever seen. So. Oh, wow. all right. I know that, <laughs> that of course, falls to Transformers the movie. Of course. <laughs> no contest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I agree with you there. I I think that I think that that Citizen Kane is excellent. I think it's it's like you said innovative. It's a technical marvel for the the period in which it was made. Mm-hmm. Um and and yeah, it's a pretty pretty decent story, pretty well acted. Um but yeah, I I, I also agree. I don't think it's the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> Yeah. That's Zodiac, obviously. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, for you, it's Zodiac. For me, it's Transformers the movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I am glad that you watched Citizen Kane before watching this. Because, like I said, while, while I was watching Mank, I was like, oh... Oh, if you haven't seen Citizen Kane, you're probably going to be kind of lost during some of this. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, that, that may be part of my problem with it is that, you know, that reliance and presumption, uh, it just to me sticks out as a. <clears throat> kind of a snobbery yeah um like just uh you know not everybody has seen everything Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i i understand that you know if if you're you know uh a high and mighty auteur like david fincher (laughs) that surely everybody has seen citizen kane the greatest movie of all time And you would have to in order to enjoy my film. Oh, man. (laughs) But, you know, no. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes things just don't get watched. Right. (laughs) There are 15 seasons of Supernatural, my good man. (laughs) I am busy. How many of those did, uh, (laughs) did Orson Welles direct? Not very many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although, completely unrelated to, to this movie and, and to watching Citizen Kane, uh, I was flipping through channels the other day and I stumbled upon uh, Magnum P.I. And I went down a Magnum P.I. hole. Okay. Gross. And, and discovered that Orson Welles was the voice of the uh, the mysterious benefactor who uh, whose house that Magnum lived in. Okay. Uh, in like five episodes of the show. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, he was doing pee commercials, so I guess he really needed to get paid. Yeah, yeah. At that point. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, <sighs> so yeah, Mank. Yeah, Mank. And, and then I was also just, uh, I didn't like Gary Oldman's voice. <laughs> yeah, I I had trouble just getting past the Gary Oldman of it all <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> like, I, I, I was reminded before I watched it that he's kind of an asshole. Is he? I feel like he's just like a misogynist dick. 
Oh wow, this is this is news to me. Yeah, I'll I'll have to look it up. It was it was some interview that he did. It was it was something about like I don't remember if it was like he was making light of domestic abuse or hmm. or or what it was. But yeah, I'll I'll have to find that. But so so I had that on my mind. I had forgotten about that until you know a couple days before I watched the movie, and then I couldn't I couldn't sort of put it out of my <laughs> mind. Plus the voice that he was doing. Uh, was yeah. was very much a lot. It yeah, it really was. It, re- it reminded me of something that I I can't think of what it kept reminding me of throughout the movie though. But uh, it it was yeah weird and kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I, I had no idea about uh, any controversy with Gary Oldman. Yeah, uh, I, I do like him as an actor. Uh, he was. Not particularly great in this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I did uh, really enjoy. Um, I enjoyed the Lily Collins, who was like his nurse or his assistant. Yeah, um, I thought she was great. Yeah, she was pretty good. Um, I thought the the other lady who doesn't have a ton to do, the, the, the German lady, the German lady. Yeah, I thought she was she was pretty good too. The uh, the one part of this movie that like affected me emotionally was her telling the story about how Mank like saved her village. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, who knows if it was true or not. But I was going to ask, it, it sounded like you had done some research about uh, how factually accurate the movie was. I assume a lot of it was not. Uh, yeah, I don't know about specific details like that but uh, <clears throat> overall the movie is uh, patently false okay <laughs> uh it's so uh jack fincher uh david fincher's late father uh wrote this script in like the late 90s i guess okay uh and it is entirely based on an essay from the 70s which uh you know puts forth that uh, mankowitz wrote the screenplay for Citizen King. Okay. Uh, or at least the majority of it and, and uh, you know, every major part of it was, was from him initially. Right. Uh, but uh, that has been, uh, you know, uh, found to be false. Uh, that that uh, while they both, uh, Orson Welles and Mankiewicz, did work on the screenplay, that it was still mostly Orson Welles that did the the majority of the writing. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the way the way he, he said it was done was that uh, uh, he and Mank basically both worked on two separate versions of the script. And then uh, Welles basically cobbled them together and took uh, the best parts from Mank's script and the best parts from his. Okay. Uh, the only thing that's really true is that, uh, you know, initially Mank agreed to write, you know, the movie uh, for no credit. Uh, and then when he asked for credit at the end, uh, Wells did get furious with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, that uh, there, there was, you know, definitely some, some issues between them. Uh, but uh, when uh, Mank finally got the credits, uh, they the, the Screenwriters Guild initially put it as uh, screenplay by Orson Welles and uh, Herman Mankiewicz. Okay. Uh, Welles circled Mankiewicz's name and put an arrow above his. Oh, interesting. Okay. So that uh, he would get uh, the first top billing on the script. Well, that's nice. Uh, and... While Mank pretty much uh, hated Orson Welles from that moment on through uh, the rest of his life, uh, Orson Welles actually did not, uh, and often thought, thought very fondly of, of uh, Mankiewicz. Nice. Yeah. Uh, he said, uh, like I think in an interview once, he said that his only real enemy is John Houseman. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. <laughs> he seemed fine. Sure. He's, he's just trying to get the job done. Yeah. 
Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I have a ton more to say about Mank. Yeah, uh, I mean, there were some parts I chuckled at and, and uh, you know, I thought some parts were fairly well acted. Uh, other parts distracted the shit out of me, like... Uh, <laughs> Whoever the hell was playing Orson Welles. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was good. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, he's no Vincent D'Onofrio with, uh, is it Maurice LaMarche's voice? Right, yeah. But but I thought he was fun. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I liked the dude from Iron Fist that played uh, Mike's brother. Was that, was that Danny Rand? Uh, not Danny Rand, uh, the, uh, like the, uh, guy who ran the Rand Corporation. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the villain's son. Gotcha. Yeah. From the first season. Yeah. yeah the yeah. only season, right? Uh, no, there were two. Were there really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Second one's I, pretty good. I never finished the first season. First season's not great. Uh, like, uh, I mean, a lot of people threw a lot of hate on it, but, uh, I, I think it's fine for the most part. Okay. Uh, season two starts off kind of rough, but, uh, gets way, way better. Uh, and so much that, uh, when they announced that it was canceled, I was very upset. I kind of want to see a season three now. Huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I would recommend giving the season two a shot at least. Is it still on Netflix? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that stuff all disappeared once the the deal ran out. I don't believe so. I know Daredevil's still on there because okay. I watched like the first ten minutes of the first episode a couple weeks ago. Nice. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know do you know who uh, Herman Mankiewicz's nephew is? Uh, I saw. The name Ben Mankiewicz in the credits. Ben Mankiewicz is, uh, I believe, would be his grandnephew. Okay. Uh, his nephew is, um, let me verify, his, his nephew is Tom Mankiewicz, okay. who was an uncredited screenwriter, uh, was credited as story consultant or creative consultant on uh, Superman and Superman 2. Oh, Okay. I know there was some controversy about the the screenplay credit on that as well, so it might just run in the family. Maybe I'd rather see a movie about that. <laughs> I mean, I would love to see a movie about the making of Superman and Superman 2. Me too. I, know, I think there's a pretty good documentary about it. Yeah. Uh, is it on any of the uh, sets that have come out? I think so, yeah. I want to okay. say it's on, it's on either the Superman or the the Donner cut Superman two DVD. Uh, I've got those on Blu-ray. So nice. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I feel like the story in Mank, you know, is very interesting. Uh, just to me, it was presented in not a very interesting way. Yeah. Uh, I, I think part of it is just, you know, trying to be too clever for itself. Uh, like structuring it like Citizen Kane and trying to make it, you know, appear as if it is a movie from, you know, 1940. Uh, just, I don't know, should have just been a straight movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if doing it as just a straight movie would have helped. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Like, you, you almost sort of have to have those flashbacks because otherwise it's like, you know, well, you you end up with you know twenty five minutes of just a guy in a room writing. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about you know the flashbacks themselves. I'm just talking about you know just the, uh, you know, just mostly presenting it as it, you know, like everything is in mono and has an echo. And oh, gotcha. So the, the style, the style, yeah, yeah of the it. style, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Because, uh, cause, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't think 
David Fincher knows what humanity is like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all right, I can see that. <laughs> like between between Zodiac and the Social Network and Gone Girl, I can see that. <laughs> Or, like, he just has a really fucked up view of it. Yeah, yeah, possibly. I mean, even, you know, going back to Fight Club and Seven and the game. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, that's that's a lot of inhumanity uh, being presented. (laughs) Or just real fucked up views of humanity. Right. Uh, but, But I also think part of it, for me anyway, like, with... I feel... Sometimes, you know, uh, a creative person, you know, especially when they're starting out, and I know, like, he directed music videos and, you know, Alien Cubed uh, (laughs) before those. Also, uh, with Charles Dance. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I'll get to that in a second, but. Okay. um, There's a hunger there, I think, you know, to, to. you know, be successful and to to do something good, you know, straight out of the box that I think really counts for something. Yeah. And then once they they've hit that success, like it's it's not a complacency, but it's like uh like like almost like a technical perfection that I think really hinders you know, some sort of emotionality or, you know, just connection with an audience that, that to me anyway, just like he he just kind of fails at. Yeah. You know, I I was going to make a joke that I wonder, like it would be interesting to see a David Fincher movie where he uses like the fifth take and not the (laughs) 200th. Yeah, but then, like, but then I realized like it wouldn't be a David Fincher movie at that point. It would just be somebody else's movie. <laughs> maybe or maybe it might be good. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but like I, I feel like him and Christopher Nolan are, are kind of like in those same areas for me. Uh, just like you know the earlier movies are, are you know have a life to them that they're more current movies just do not yeah uh and i it just it makes me find them to be mostly tedious i get that yeah Yeah, there there's definitely a stillness to to what i think of as a david fincher movie and i think that's what i i think that's what i enjoy like like i say that zodiac is just really comforting i think i'm comforted by that sort of stillness um, but I can totally see how it is not appealing to to everyone. But man, I'm in a minority. People love that shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's about craft, man. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Just I, I, I cannot recommend this movie, but. Would you? I don't know if I would. I, I, w- I would recommend other David Fincher movies before I recommend this one. Sadly, Zodiac is no longer on Netflix, or I would recommend that one. <laughs> um, this is why yeah. you go out and buy the Blu-ray. There you go. Yes. Physical media forever. Absolutely. I, d- I have it on DVD. It's just nice to have it conveniently. <laughs> well, sure, I'm, no. I'm lazy. I don't want to have to get up. No, I totally understand. I just watched so many movies that I own. <laughs> I'm just like, I oh, don't. Bookshelf is like ten feet away, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I uh, if you can find a supercut of all of uh, Amanda Seyfried's scenes, watch that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, so what's what's good for you this week? Uh, I don't know. No. Oh. Um, so uh, uh, I recently 
uh, gained access to an HBO Max account. Ooh, nice. Uh, and uh, even though I had watched all of them on YouTube uh, as they were coming out, uh, I have actually been going back to watch the full episodes of uh, last week's Night with John Oliver. Nice. Uh, especially from this past year. Uh, which have been weird <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, because it's reliving the early days of the pandemic through, you know, a, a 10 month ago filter. Yeah. Uh, but they are a goddamn delight. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's pretty good. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> and uh, I hate to say it because, like, the first three episodes of uh, this year's uh, shows were, you know, as he normally does with an audience. Uh, and then by episode four, he switches to an uh, uh, a, a white void behind a desk with no one around. Right. And I think it got better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think he got funnier and, and more pointed and then uh, just more on target. Yeah, I feel like it did definitely get tighter yeah. when it was when it was just him without the audience. Yeah. Um. I I I think because because we we watched a little bit of it initially, um, when he came back from pandemic break, mm-hmm. um, and then I think it. I, I I don't know why we stopped watching it. I feel I feel like it made me a little uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I don't know why. <laughs> like I, I need the audience cue to laugh. Maybe <laughs> it's like just put a laugh track on it, and I'd be happy. <laughs> but you're supposed to be the laugh track. I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, he's he is uh, incredibly smart and incredibly funny. Yeah. Uh, the the only other thing that I would have to say uh, for for a joyous thing, which uh, is going to start out not sounding very joyous, uh, but today I learned that uh, comic artist Richard Corbin passed away. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, while that is not very joyful, uh, it did make me reminisce about all his arts that I have experienced and that I love and uh, that there's still such a vast library of his work that is out there that I have never seen before. And, uh, you know, brings me comfort to know that I can go out and find some more Richard Corbin work. That's awesome. Just celebrate uh, just how amazing he was. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's great. (laughs) It's, it's, you know, obviously very sad when, uh, a talented person or artist passes away. Um, but it's also kind of great because everyone sort of comes out and shares their favorite, their favorite thing, thing that that person did, whether it's, you know, a scene from a movie or a song or a piece of art. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I never really like, I, I think that, that he, most of his stuff is outside of, a genre that I've that I've been interested in in comics for a long time. Sure. Um, so you know I haven't I, seen much will, of it. <laughs> I will definitely say you know the the first time I ever saw his art, I loved it immediately. But I could also just say, yeah, this is not for everybody, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did he did a bunch of like heavy metal stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And then just sort of horror. Yeah, yeah. And lots of fantasy. Fantasy, yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, so so not not really in in what's traditionally been my comics wheelhouse. Sure. Um, but but man, yeah, I've just I've seen a lot of incredible stuff from him today, and I, I I wish it you know didn't take his his passing to for for me to come around to see that stuff and and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, but I am glad know, I'm getting to see it. Uh, you know, as much of a fan of his as that I am, uh, today I learned that uh, he did the album cover for Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell. That's awesome. Yeah. Not not anything that I particularly like, but, you know, it's a cool album cover. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah. What about you? Uh, probably the new season of Big Mouth. Okay. I don't know. Have you watched that at all? 
I have not seen any of it. Oh, you, I, I think you would enjoy it. It is, it is absolutely filthy and just, just hysterical. All right. <laughs> like if, if you like, I mean, I, I think if you have any affection for Nick Kroll or John Mulaney, uh, or I, I know you have affection for Jason Manzukas. I do um, indeed. I, I, I think that, that watching that show, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. Right. Um, but the the fourth season came out uh, at the end of last week, and it, it's it's sadly sadly a short. You know, it's like ten episodes, and they're half hour episodes, so we blew through it far too quickly. Uh, but it was it's it's such a funny show and just really entertaining. So that's probably yeah. what the thing that made me the happiest this past week. Well, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I. I don't know that I've actively avoided it, but I've definitely not been like, yeah, I am going to sit down and start watching that. Even though, like you said, there's tons of people who work on it that I enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I kept a, just have not watched it, but eh, maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah, you should. I, I'm glad you mentioned John Oliver. That's what made me think of it. Cause he, he appears in one or two of the early episodes and is basically uh, okay. just, he's basically just John Oliver and it's great. Okay. <laughs> nothing wrong with that not at all uh that, that sort of reminds me of uh you know even though it had been available on hulu for you know years uh for some reason i only started rewatching community when it came onto netflix okay <laughs> <laughs> uh and i remember that john oliver had been in the first season for sure uh, but you know, I was surprised to find out that he does return like in later seasons. And, yeah, and it was you know, delightful to see him there too. Definitely. Yeah. Ah, so should I pick a movie? Uh, probably should. Alrighty. If you'd like to continue. Uh, yeah, why not? Excellent. Uh, so speaking of Hulu, that is where you'll be able to find this movie. Okay. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers oh, no. crossed. Yep. Uh, at least, you know, with Mank, you picked one that is Netflix exclusive. That means it's not going anywhere. And it was brand new. So. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is not brand new. Uh, I, yeah, unless you veto, which for some reason you, I, I have a feeling you might. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, but I would like, I've actually been wanting to watch this since we started the show. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, re- restarted. Uh, I would like to watch the Ben Stiller remake of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. All right. No veto. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I have not seen that. And oh, it's, okay. It, it's I, it's uh, sort of been not not necessarily on my list, but it's something that I scroll past every now and then and think, oh, I should probably watch that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I actually bought it on Blu-ray, uh, for like a dollar. Nice. Uh, like back in January or whatever. Was that one uh, of your Dollar Tree finds? Yep. You son of a bitch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I found a real good one the other day. Uh, do you know the Tom Hardy series Taboo? No, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Uh, it's like, uh, just a eight episode British TV show where he plays uh, just a fucked up dude who decides that he's going to run a shipping company. Okay. Interesting. Uh, not, a con- not a concrete company. Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Expanding that to other industries. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is really, really good. And uh, I don't, I don't think anybody watched it, but I found the Blu-ray set at uh, Dollar Tree. Nice. Snatched it up. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Secret Life of Ultra Mini. Uh, you know, I bought it on Blu-ray, wanted to watch it, thought, hey, this might be something good for the show, but it has never been available on streaming that I have seen up until I found it on Hulu, like, last week. Excellent. So so we can both watch it now. Awesome. And, yeah, if, if for some reason it's not on there, I'll see if I can get it from the library. All right. Because I would like to watch that. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Excellent. Well, we will talk about that next week. All righty. We'll see you then. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to The View Masters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on The View Masters. Yeah.